Welcome everyone to Doing Business with a Servant's Heart. Business and life with a purpose, serving others, achieving success. That's our goal. I'm your host, Steve Ramona. We created this show for you because we want everyone to learn how to do business and life to make an impact in the world. What will your legacy end up looking like? Welcome to the show, Jacob. Thanks very much, Steve. I'm really glad to be here. We've had some great conversations about serving, service, abundance, and so on and so forth in the previous meeting in you know, the green room before the show. Let's start with what are you proudest of proudest of accomplishing? Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. Thanks for going for the like swinging for the fences right off the beginning. Um, so, you know, I, I have my own language for it. And so I'm going to kind of give the long answer every time, because I think that's one of the things that's important. Like having somebody give you a response without defining it often has things fall short. So I'm proudest of accomplishing something called a life by design. But what that actually means is that, you know, I've been able to live a life based on a high quality of life or the way I define it for myself. I'm taking actions every day in all four areas of life. Like the era I grew up in, all the successful people that were portrayed on TV or in movies or that kind of stuff where all this like character who's on the verge of a downfall because they had wealth in terms of finances. And then the crux of every single story was either their relationship was completely destroyed, right? With themselves, with other people, with their significant partner, their health was a shambles, like whatever it is. I feel like we all grew up in an environment that taught us to that, to have something in one area means sacrificing something in another area. And I completely disagree with that. And I was just given a special gift when I was younger of like what I call, I got to have my midlife crisis when I was 17. But that put that stuff front and center for me. And I've had the opportunity to never let go of that. I always have that with me. Interesting you say gifts. I call them superpowers. Again, all the same thing. How important yeah. is to find those superpowers or gifts that you have? Yeah, I mean, I think it's I think it's vital. I think it's why those characters exist that I was referring to, because, you know, um, with with one of the communities that I work in and, and something that I got, I want to don't want to create credit for everything because I've obviously been taught a lot of things by some brilliant people. But one of my mentors said this thing years ago, and he's like, it's about having enough and being awesome. And I've met so many people who are like, I'm going to go out and do this. Once I'm a billionaire philanthropist, once I make a million dollars and like, that's why I built the stuff I built into my own company of like, you know what, forget waiting that long. Like, why don't we just go out, hit six figures a year in a 20 hour work week, which is above the median income and puts you in 1% of the way above 1% of the planet in terms of income already. And then what are you going to do with those extra 20 hours a week? And like, go out and make a difference. Go out and be something. Go out and start today instead of waiting till tomorrow, which honestly is a tomorrow that never comes for a lot of people. I love what you're saying there because I talk to business owners all the time about indecisiveness, not taking action. Talk a little bit more about that. Well, I think one of the things is... I use mountains a lot for my analogies. Like the mountains are my church. That's where I go out, find myself, realize that like, you know, in a lot of ways, like all the things that you think are worrisome or concerned, like don't matter. They just disappear, right? And so a lot of us, A, are climbing the wrong mountain, first off. Like because of our childhood, our upbringing, uh, being taught certain things, whether it's school or just like, consuming too much content that says this is how you succeed. You end up working your ass off on something and getting up even halfway or to the false summit and realizing that the last 10, 20, 15 years of your life haven't been moving towards your dreams. That's a shocking thing. So that's one of the fundamental pieces of it. And then the other side of it is while you're doing that, you can take on all sorts of stress, 
and that sort of stuff and build a life that you need to escape from. And that's another piece, right? Your nervous system actually can get fried from it. That's where all sorts of things come from, where you are depending on stuff that doesn't serve you, right? And I, I think about this a lot because when I go out to nature and outside of the city, I come back and I'm like cleansed. And then you see the people who never leave an urban environment. And it's like, no wonder all the taking in a depressant like, alcohol like i have a drink once in a while but what's that for it's just to calm your nervous system because you're stressed out all the time just from that environment right like just an urban environment can be stressful and so some of the behaviors that we're trying to escape from are because we've built lives that we're trying to escape from instead of living with what's in alignment for us or back to that whole idea of a life by design right something purposeful that actually fulfills you turns out to be a thing that you don't need to recover escape get relief from all those sorts of stuff. It's well said. It, it, it's And it's simple, but it's not simple. And that's one of those, we won't go that down that rabbit hole because that's a big one. And we're talking about all these accomplishments and good, good things. And I hear all the time, why am I not successful? What's your answer to that question? Yeah, that is, that's a brilliant question. I think A, because we're taught to measure the wrong thing as success to start with. B, because a lot of people out there are selling you their system and not your success. So there's a mismatch right there. And I've got some pretty talented mentors in the world of business and they work inside of certain companies. And there's two different pieces that I think are important. One of them is I have some IP that's been handed to me for decades now and it comes back from a consultancy that guaranteed doubling the bottom line of any business. Okay, and that's, that's what this guy did. He ran this program, did consulting. He'd walk into a business and he'd say, we're not going to spend money on advertising. We're not going to spend money on marketing. We're going to get rid of all the inefficiencies. So are you willing to take like a 30 to 50% pay cut for the next three you know, months or three quarters or an entire year so that I can double a business that actually works? And the answer often was like, no, because we're kind of addicted to both the stress and maybe this idea of like coming down from here is a loss, even though it's a net gain. And so how much inefficiency is built into our lives and our behaviors and realizing that we have to change is a really confrontational thing. And then second to that, whether or not you're going to resist the change, like you could hire a mentor, a coach, somebody like me, a consultant, somebody like you to work you through it. But if you're not careful, all the people that you surrounded yourself with, all the systems that you built, all that kind of stuff are going to create a center of gravity that works against it. And so you have to be willing to make the change on your behalf and on the behalf of others. And, and that's where certain things can arise, right? And anybody who's, like there's so many interviews out there about people who had to go through that growth. And we'll talk about how they had to make choices about continuing to love certain people and leave them behind, so to speak. So well said. And what it brings to mind is take one step back to go three steps forward. You're yeah. ahead two extra steps. And that's really what you're saying. Yeah. Selling success, not selling systems. Interesting comment. Cause you're yeah. right. We go on the internet, YouTube, I mean, you could probably find 50 systems on how to sell your business. Yeah. Let's talk about selling success a little more deeply because that's a powerful message. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's the, the foundation of what I do now. I'm not going to pretend that I did this when I first opened 8020 Media, <laughs> but I came to it from my holistic healthcare practice. And like I learned that first in clinical rehab, like 98% of pain is a site of a compensation pattern, not an injury. These are like published statistical facts. And then I started moving into the business world, first to open my own clinic, and then second to take that clinic online. And then third to be like, while taking that clinic online, I was like, oh, I have a way of helping helpers. I can help other people who want to be in this space. And I put my clinic onto Zoom almost 10 years ago, right? Before everybody discovered it was a thing. And inside of that process, what I found and I had to work through and I had to go and do those steps back to move forward more than once myself. And those aren't easy lessons every time. But inside of that process, 
I realized how much of these outside environments are just like, hey, just take my copy and paste thing and contort your thing into it, right? Twist your values and your stuff a little bit. And so it's kind of like you, but not really you, but just go and then go purely for quantity, not quality. And that's one of the first places that you start to drift. And we're sold this idea of that's what success is. We're also sold this mentality that quantity success. And, and he's so quotable. Seth Godin created the best language of, for this on the planet, I think. He just calls it the race to the bottom, right? Mm -hmm. If Steve's got a $500 product and he's willing to spend $450 on ads and Jacob has a $500 product and I'm willing to spend $475 on ads so we can just push more out than you, then I'm going to win that game. And neither of us playing that game care about the end user and what kind of value they're getting. And so that's where it really starts to go off the rails. Race to the Bottom is a great book. I think that's the name of the book, right? Yeah, that's Seth, um, Seth Godin's genius. Something like that. Really? Yeah. So we, we're talking about struggles, and I love the transparency because I'm not a, we're not a show of, uh, of, life and flowers and gold and diamonds because we know our life and our business goes up and down there's struggles how can we cut those struggles in half half yeah. the time yeah that's that is a brilliant question so i guess one of the first things i'd say is recognizing that statistic and like i want to pretend that i took that 98 percent thing and carried it over to this business right away and applied it right away and i didn't i i failed at it numerous times but recognizing that the thing that you're struggling with isn't the problem like the symptom and the source are different things and the best way to get to work on that stuff is get outside help for God's sake, like get somebody who can actually look at the thing from the outside and be like, oh, this thing way over here is completely broken. Because I met so many people who are inside of it. And then because you're inside of it, you cannot see what's going on. You're just lost, right? In the forest for the trees kind of thing, or you're that far side cartoon of the kid for the school for the gifted, forehead against the door on the pole door. Like, and this happens to everyone. Like if you don't think it happens, double check you have a belly button because it happens. And so that's one of the most important pieces. And then I think the other side of it doesn't have to be an individual, can be a community as well, but to figure out your alignment. And this is maybe the work to do first in the process of building, growing, launching a business or coming up with an idea is what I call alignment first work. Like, this is going to serve me in serving others. And you can't go out of alignment to get into alignment. I learned this a lot in, in Aikido. And, like, you have to have good posture to do the technique. They have to good, have good posture to do the technique. If you're crooked, you're just going to make them crooked. And so if you're not willing to take that work on, the chance that you're going to build a business back to Seth Godin, he's like, Build a life that you don't need a vacation from instead of wondering when your next vacation is, right? And a lot of people are on that entrepreneurial track building this thing that they're like, oh my God, I can't wait till I have enough money to escape this. Instead of, oh my God, I can't believe I get to wake up every day and do this. And so I'd suggest you start with that first foundationally and then build the business around that. Yeah, and you mentioned community individual and community. I think it's so important. We can't do this stuff alone. Me and you yeah. are a community right now. We're helping each other explain how to help these people and talk about what you do and how you do it. So I love community or village. I call it who's your village, what's your village or inner circle, whatever words you want to use. And you mentioned mentors a couple, three times so far in the show, big fan yeah. of them. I have them myself. How important is somebody listening that needs to have a mentor? Yeah. I mean, when I, like, again, I'm going to give you the long answer, right? Like, when I say life by design, for me, that means every day, every week, every month, every quarter, annually, I'm like, okay, health and well-being, relationships with self and others, home and environment, and business and finance. These are the areas of life I'm going to grow in. These are the actions I'm going to take. And I'm giving you those areas because I can guarantee list 
at least four to six people that I resource as mentors in each of those areas. Now, everybody's got some overlap and their expertise covers more than one area of life, the same way that like going out in the mountains is health and well-being and relationship for myself and environment, right? It covers those three areas. Mentors will do that too. And so I've woven a net around me of just people who have insight, expertise, and most of it, that outside perspective that like we know we lack because I admit to being human and I, I just get my forehead against the door as much as anybody else. Let's flip it. So you need mentors. I'm a mentor. I just did a mentoring meeting this morning. It was a call and it ended up being, I helped him with some things. I know you're a mentor because we've talked about it. How important is that side of it? I think it's huge. And I think one of the most important things you learn along the way as, as somebody who's in the middle, let's say, because I have like, I look up to his mentors and I mentor down now as well, is anytime I go and talk to these people above me and I show up with complaints, frustration, any of that kind of stuff, most of their instructions are A, like go back, redesign, optimize, make sure your systems are better, and B, do a better job of vetting. Because what you want to do is put yourself in a situation where you're playing a win-win game. And essentially, whether it's a friendship by donation, you're doing it for candy, or you're taking money, if you're trying to help someone who's resisting you, yeah. it's going to be frustrating for both parties. And that's another alignment thing. And the better you get at vetting the people in this space that you're supporting and trying to elevate, the more satisfaction and of course the better results all around. And I'm going to go back. You just, a thought came to my head as you're so well saying what you're saying. We talked about selling success and yeah. you said, don't sell systems. So what I'm hearing from you, manage your systems to help you sell success. Did I yeah. hear that right? Yeah. And figure out what your system, like, let me say it a different way because I can show you something I failed at early on. Like, when we launched 8020 Media, it was like, we can help you mostly with leads, right? And that's what we excelled at in the beginning. And then the leads would fall off the flat earth because we weren't responsible for it. And we were trying to like say the client should do that. And what works better now is we put a digital infrastructure in, space, in place as well. So we're reliable on both ends. Now, understanding that has made me become excellent at understanding how the platform needs to be built because those are just empty boxes right it's like showing up to a place and there's just like a giant pile of wood and nails and you're like okay let's make a house like a blueprint is necessary so my clients hear me ranting all the time that the customer journey dictates the platform built and one of the biggest things that I see is I've talked to hundreds, like I'm clocking now over 600 of these consulting calls. Delivering a six-figure business plan takes two minutes of the call. Making sure it fits on a post-it note, two minutes. Having a conversation to find out if this business will fill their heart and fulfill them, 25 minutes. Yeah. And then saying, okay, now that we understand this, like how do we move a customer through this thing so that you're doing your best work each step of the way? Then we can tell the platform, the software, the thing to operate versus being like, here are my copy and paste templates. Now go run off and deploy it. Those aren't bad things, but you have to know so much about how to engineer that stuff so it actually fits what you do instead of, again, just taking what you do and shoving it into it and hoping that it works. I don't like to, gen yeah, Jacob, you're nailing it. And, and, and I don't want to generalize, but you're talking about every business, profit or nonprofit. We're all selling something. And that's yeah. important, the change, because COVID taught us that. So I yeah. want to lead into servant because yeah. well said. everything was information that was so important. So somebody's out there listening and going, okay, this is all great, but how do I tie it in serving? Yeah. Yeah. Well, coming from like the clinical rehab space, I spent some time and I had a teacher once in that environment. She's like, service is the highest honor. And I heard it 
and I maybe said it, but it took me years to figure it out. So one of my first experiences and discoveries of it is in the beginning, you're taught some techniques and then somebody comes to you with their pain and you're just like, you're whipping some techniques on them. Instead of being like, wait, this is like a human being, a brain, a body, a mind, a nervous system. What does it need? And that's one of the reasons why um, in the 80-20 media space, I'm like, I'm a consultant, not a coach. I'm not going to talk to you about like, what your feelings are about why you're not doing the work that you're supposed to do. And I'm like, I'm not down on coaching. I've got some fantastic coaches and I know when I'm being coached, but I like to take a little bit more of a clinical perspective on it and be like, this is the thing that needs to get fixed. The pain is over here. Like you're experiencing pain over here in the compensation pattern, but this is where the pain is and what needs to be handled. And sometimes something come up and I'll be like, you go get coaching on that. Right. And when you're more aligned with yourself, come back, we'll fix this thing in your business and make sure it works and it's functional. But understanding those two components is a really important piece because if you don't see that in yourself and understand that inside of your business, then there's going to be a mismatch as well. And you need to do the inner work. Um, back to like quoting for a minute. Another thing that I got delivered is that the single biggest asset of any organization is the state of the CEO. But knowing that means that that makes that person responsible for putting other systems in place to maintain that state, right? Or people, communities, all that sort of stuff again. I'm like, what are you going to do to bring the best you to the business? And then when you know that what that is, how do you design the business to support you in bringing that to other people? Now that's service. You have to be appropriately selfish and serve yourself so you can really serve others. It's a great way to end the show. We've run out of time. I, I like how you tied service into to selling and uh, systems because that's what you need to do is that's the forefront and then selling and service. I want to thank you because I've learned a lot. I've taken a bunch of notes. I hope the listeners have as well, but thank you for being on today, Jacob. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. And like, if I could end with anything, sure. because you talk about sales and I think that's so important, the better everything is designed, the tighter your customer journey is, the more sales is about vetting for fit. Because if you approach every single potential customer as like, I want to hit home run in terms of a testimonial from this person, then you're only going to sell to the people you can produce absolute wins for. And if you can't do that, go back and redesign that part of your business until you can. And that's really the key, I think. You match those two things and you will like blow the doors off of what you think success is while being happy about it. What a great way to recap. Man, thank yeah. you so much. And I want to thank, thank you. you all for listening. I will be looking for you on our next episode of Doing Business with a Servant's Heart, where I have another incredible guest like Jacob today. We want to teach you how to serve and how serving can really accomplish a lot for you. I'll have a great day.